Recently, I finished watching the Ghibli film only yesterday, and it was a gem. I've been a fan of Ghibli films for many years now, but it took me a long time to get to this one because I had heard that this movie would bore me to death. However, that could not be farther from the truth. Emotionally resonant, with the usual beautiful Ghibli aesthetic, Only Yesterday is a must-watch, but I don't want to just give a review for a movie that's older than I am. Instead, I want to use this film as an example to highlight the difference between many Western and Japanese films. As a disclaimer, I know that not everything I will say here applies to all Western or all Japanese films. I am speaking generally about trends that I have noticed in the way stories are told in the West and in Japan. So, what is this big difference? In one word, plot. More specifically, the fact that Only Yesterday barely has a plot. It is more of a series of flashbacks and random scenes from a woman's countryside vacation rather than a traditional western story with an introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, and conclusion. It is because of this lack of a traditional plot that some people call Only Yesterday boring. In American schools, we are taught that this five-point story structure is the proper way to structure a story, but alternatives do exist. For example, the Kisho Tenketsu structure is prevalent throughout Japanese poetry and film, and I plan to go more in depth on this specific structure in a future video. For now, let's just call what Only Yesterday has a meandering plot. That is to say, it takes its time, and the story seems to wander around here and there until settling on an emotional conflict in the last third of the film. Rather than follow the typical five-part story structure, Only Yesterday instead chooses to do what I have seen many Japanese stories do. Take a deep dive into the life of one of its characters. In the case of Only Yesterday, the focus is on Taiko. The film shows off her strengths, weaknesses, vulnerabilities, and how much she has grown. What this story lacks in traditional action it more than makes up for with emotional impact. In the flashback sequences, we feel Taiko's joys, her insecurities, her frustrations, shortcomings, and triumphs. We see her choosing to stay strong in the face of disappointment after disappointment. For example, the scene where Taiko's mother tells her to keep the fact that she was offered an acting role before another classmate a secret because it would hurt the other girl's feelings to realize she wasn't the first choice. This is the final nail in the coffin for Taiko's short-lived dream of becoming an actress, and she is noticeably upset. However, instead of sulking all the way home, she chooses to sing the theme song of her favorite TV show, Hyokori Pumpkin Island whose lyrics remind her that there will be sad times, and there will be hard times, but she will continue to stay strong through them. Another example of this aspect of Taiko's character is found in the pineapple scene, my favorite scene in the whole movie, because it does so much with so little. What happens in this scene can be summarized in one sentence. A family is disappointed when they try pineapple for the first time. It seems straightforward and boring, but when you actually watch the scene, it is anything but. This scene kept me completely engaged with the film, and the reason why happens to be one of the biggest strengths of a meandering plot, the creation of suspense through uncertainty. In a world where movies are filled with the inevitable triumphs of heroes over evil forces, it is refreshing to watch a scene with no stakes. In a superhero film, if the hero loses, the world is doomed. So they must prevail. They must win. The stakes are too high not to, but this eliminates the suspense of the main conflict. The hero's victory is never in doubt, 
only the means by which they get there. That is why many films are forced to have a secondary source of uncertainty to create tension and suspense. Take Top Gun Maverick, for example. We know the pilots will successfully complete their mission. The real stakes are if they will all get out alive. Similarly, in Avengers Endgame, we know they will reverse Thanos' snap. The suspense comes when we think about what it will cost to accomplish this goal. This is what makes the pineapple scene incredible. The stakes are so low, and the result of whether or not the family likes the pineapple are so inconsequential that literally anything can happen. The scene creates suspense over the primary question, will the family like the pineapple? Watching it, I really had no idea how the scene would play out, which was exciting. Especially when I'm used to watching films where I already know the end result, and the only uncertainty is in how they will get there. This scene also continues to reveal more of Taiko's character. While eating the pineapple, she doesn't necessarily seem to enjoy it. After being so excited by its exotic shape and sweet smell, the pineapple disappointed her and her entire family. But she keeps eating it anyway, and when she finishes, she pauses and says that it's good. She then ends up eating the leftover pieces from the rest of her family. Here, we see one of Taiko's strengths on display. She can find joy and value in what everyone else so quickly discarded. We see this trait continue into Taiko's adult years from the very beginning of the movie, when Taiko explains to her boss that she is not taking a long vacation overseas, but is instead going to a rural village to do farm work. Certainly not a popular vacation itinerary. Once again, Taiko finds value in something that most others have quickly rejected. Being someone with uncommon interests and coming from a rural background, I found this aspect of Taiko's character relatable and even a little inspiring. It motivates me to try and take a more active role in finding joy and value in the little things or the unusual things, even if most other people wouldn't give them a second thought. So, while the plot of Only Yesterday may be a little meandering, it isn't pointless or boring. People are complex, and our lives are not as straightforward as some Hollywood blockbuster film where we find and ultimately beat the villain of the story. Our lives are meandering as well, and more often than not, our struggles come from within rather than some evil external force. And only yesterday's approach manages to capture this beautifully, allowing it to connect with the viewer on a deep emotional level. Through our connection with the characters on screen, we can better connect with and understand ourselves. That's why these stories can still be wonderful and successful, even without a traditional Western story structure. So don't shy away from a movie just because someone says it's boring or has an unconventional plot. Give it a chance. Trade some adrenaline for humanity, and you just might, like I did with Only Yesterday, find something incredible. Thank you for watching. I know this is a departure from my usual content, but I wanted to try it out. So leave me a comment letting me know what you thought. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe.